Hey there, my fellow BMW enthusiasts. Today I'm talking about the downpipe installation on an E92-335i, and it will also cover several other models, as well as give you a really close idea of what to look for in a lot of similar model years, if you're doing something similar. So this will go through all the problems that arose, as well as some basic maintenance you can do and some things you can check during the entire process. The inlet video will follow shortly after. It's quite old, so bear with it. It's been restructured to be a step-by-step -step guide, but I will also post a more concise, very quick reference guide for those of you who know exactly what you're doing. Stay tuned, let's get to it. First, you're going to want to remove the cowl, and then you're going to want to take off the engine cover at this point. Then you can move under the car. I'm going to attempt to remove the rear inlet without cutting it. I know that people cut it. I believe everyone cuts it. Actually, worst case, I would drop the sub lower the subframe a bit, but I would definitely do the downpipes and the inlets at the same time. But the first thing you want to do when you take off the bottom panel, which is supposed to be 16, bolts which I think are eight millimeter but what you mine's completely different because the, they're all mixed up anyways what you want to do first is spray the bolts with PB blaster or at least WD-40 or something of that nature so, hey just easing the tension baby just easing the tension so you can let it sit while you do the rest of the stuff even if it's just a few minutes because these will likely be stuck those two are the bottom downpipe bolts for the downpipes. And if you can, stick up in there and spray the top the top bolts the best you can. And just let it soak. Doesn't have to be perfect, but let them soak. I'm using my new Husky impact rated socket set that I got. $40 on sale. Pretty cool. I have the 2.0 battery. I also came with the 4.0 battery, which barely removes the lug nut even though this is rated at 250 foot-pounds. Then I got this cheap Chinese-made 6.0 battery for $20 off eBay. So I'm going to test and see if this is actually any different. We shall see. So those are 12 millimeter, at least on my car. Nice. Uh, for the record, I let WD-40 sit on here for maybe 20 minutes. I had PB Blaster, but it wouldn't spray out of the can, so it's defective, I guess, or too old. I need to do the other two on that side. Just a six inch extension. I have to reach in there. That one's not breaking. Let's try this one. broke free, so this one's being a pain. Alright, let's try the bigger battery. This is the 6.0 battery. If this doesn't work, I guess I'll try the 4.0. For all I know, this could be nothing. That did it, although I don't know the proof behind it. Maybe it's already loosening. Alright, that's all four. Got all these new tools today. Got my stubby, got the tool to organize, got this uh, crawler that I think is about 20 years old. Got this when I was a little kid and <laughs> I never, I was like, what the hell did I do? I didn't even care about cars back then. Anyways, all right, so those are loose. I'm not gonna try to attempt the O2 sensors until I get these off the car. I highly recommend removing the steering rack bolts, which I think are E12s on the bottom, and then the top nut is a 16 millimeter, which is the only damn wrench size I don't have. But doing that would save you so much heartache. I can painfully stick my hand in there, but my wrist squeezes between there so tight it hurts pretty badly. So the rear turbo, it's 
almost directly on the top. It's just kind of angled towards the passenger side a bit. And then on the front elbow, it's directly down facing you, angled slightly towards the passenger side as well. The, the front turbo shouldn't matter as much as the back turbo because the back turbo one can looks like it might hit that wastegate. V-band clamp doesn't look too bad. And then you have to make sure it's successful. I'm gonna trial and error it. Also, those O2 sensors have to come out. I have a little O2 sensor removal tool from uh, Harbor Freight. It's like five bucks. Get that, that will make it easier. I'll put that at the beginning, hopefully, of the video so I can, so you can run out and get some stuff before you do this. A 16 millimeter wrench, that would help. I tried to hit it with an impact, but either way, it wouldn't come loose. It just spun. Okay, so I was able to use a deep 16 millimeter socket on this side at least. I can't, I can't do the other side without a box wrench, I believe. But what I'm going to try to do is just twist this damn thing. There's the nut. So it moves in a bit. That one loosened. That's enough. Okay. So this is the driver's side. I hit this with an impact. I got lucky. It loosened enough for me to t twist this out. This one I loosened and I just pushed this out so I should be able to hit this technically with an impact and tighten it again but if not I'll go out and get a 16 millimeter or figure out some way after. This is just spaced out you can see just enough for me to stick my hand in there just comfortably. Now my wrist can fit through there. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off the O2 sensors and loosen the V-band clamp. The hardest part is going to be squeeze into that very top one but this one I was able to undo without the extension this one up here I have to use an extension this is like a three inch extension it looks like and you have to use a quarter inch ratchet driver and it's a 13 millimeter bolt and this will work so I have to use both hands without the camera I'm just loosening them to make sure they're gonna loosen there's gonna be no issues and then before I take them off I'm actually gonna remove the O2 sensor. this is the O2 sensor tool it uh, has an edge to slide around the cord. So this thing has come in handy many times in my life. So the O2 sensors are right here. The other one's right here. And I just, they're in a little cubby, so you kind of just lightly, because this thing's brittle, just edge one side and hold it. Just gently pull it out. You flip them over, and there's a clip here, and what you do is push down and disconnect. Don't pull by the wires because they're in there tight. So now I should have done this in the beginning, but I was pretty gentle because the front ones are wide, wide band. Uh, they're pretty expensive. They're good O2 sensors. The downstream ones are narrow band. Those ones, whatever. I don't think mine work anyways. So here you can just trace it back. I there are just little clips, and just just to leave it there. So when the bottom one twists, when the bottom one twists, you can. Let the wires twist. I'm just gonna pull it out of the clips. There are two more. I don't even think they're clipped in anyways because I unclipped them. They look like this. Right here, they look like that. And I unclipped half of them when I was changing the thing. So there's just that and the plastic clip here and I think a plastic clip in the back. Just a side note on the project to mention, for sure unplug these, unwind them around, take off the clip take off that clip right there on the O2 sensors and so they separate and, and let them physically twist while you're unscrewing them or even slightly untwist them. Don't twist them at all or just probably have to replace them because I was pretty delicate with mine. They seem to have zero tension no matter when I was twisting them but they still, I still have a code for bank one so I'm going to have to replace the sensor and likely do both because it's not usually the protocol to replace just one so 
yeah, be really careful, at least with the front two, the back two. Yeah. You want to note the orientation of the O2 sensors as well. I'm going to put a piece of tape around the one of them, so probably the one closest to me would be easier, so I'll put a piece of tape around that, which is the front turbo, because I believe they're, well, I know they're different um, plugs up top, so you'll, you'll probably run into a code or performance issue if they, they swap, I'm assuming, but yeah, just put a little piece of tape or something to label which one's front and back, and the other ones have, the other ones, I can't see it back there, but it's, it's gray or black, I think, I haven't actually looked at it, in fact, I think I've, I've been, oddly enough, having this uh, code for these O2 sensors since I've owned the car for many years, I just uh, shadow, make them a shadow code as if I have downpipes so that it doesn't bother me, but um, it was annoying to uh, pass smog in California, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what the setup looks like for the O2 sensor removal. This was bare, barely able to clear with the 3 8 Put gloves on for this because you're probably going to smash your knuckles right into that pipe, which I just did, but I put gloves on because I'm pretty sure that was going to happen. So that. That only, I mean, that that was actually kind of forceful to take that off. So I think it'd be easier if you remove this one. In fact, I'm gonna have to take the wire off up top because it's just gonna keep spinning this. Anyways, it's easier to remove this first one to, before you undo the second one above it. All right, yep. That one's gonna bust my hand too, but there is room for three eighths. So I'm gonna do this and then record it after. This takes precision in the angle I did it. I, I moved the knob on the ratchet back and forth until I got it exactly there. I'm only doing this because this one's extremely tight. So I'm using a 24 millimeter box wrench, angling it backwards, and that's how I'm gonna break this. Because, I mean, you could you could stick your head up there and break it the other way, but it's, it's definitely gonna hurt, so even with a glove. So this way I'm gonna do it. One hand without hitting myself in the face. All right, and that was that. The V-bone clamps are tight, but not too tight. Not even close to the O2 sensor. So I just lose it about three turns, and then they're enough to take it out. Let me take out this bottom pipe first, which is the front turbo. I'm going to loosen the V-band, and then I'm going to stick a flat head in between the clamp. I just wanted to show a picture of the V-band clamp for the rear turbo. I'm looking from the bottom of the car you can see the angle right there a good angle of it it's right by that coolant pipe maybe an inch inch and a half left of the coolant pipe i'm right between the steering rack and the subframe if you look right there it's kind of right in between the o2 sensor and the pipe so i failed to see this bracket right here and I looked up and it's connected to the transmission so it looks like you're gonna take them out one at a time so this down pipe's gonna have to come out first this is a 12 millimeter box wrench put it there and smack it with a hammer and it loosened it this wasn't very tight at all these look pretty rusty though so if they're stuck then you might want to spray them first now what I did is I took the hanger off back here it was an E10 that dropped these mid pipes down a bit, enough to let this loose. And then I took out the V-band clamp and let this dangle, but the hanger has a hook, and I'll show you after I get it off. I didn't realize it had a hook. I thought you had to undo these bolts on the transmission, which is insane. But this is the worst part of the job so far as this, but I think the solution I found out will make it work next time. That's what the hanger looks like right there. And this should just slide out, no problem no matter what I couldn't get it out to get this out easily you'd have to remove the the downpipe that's above it but the problem is I even 
use that super extension to pull out that socket. I didn't need to do that. So what I ended up doing was this guy was in there kind of like that. I finally just got so annoyed that I stuck the screwdriver in right there and just pried it out to this pushed out. That's it. And then this second will be easier to remove. So I didn't even need to spend all that time with the socket removing the other nut because this has almost no play because I couldn't loosen the V-band. Um, I couldn't get my hand up in there. You probably could with some tools and stuff, but this just seemed easier. So this hanger is such a pain, but these two 12 millimeter nuts, just do this one first. So I just clean these out with mass airflow cleaner, which I wouldn't, I don't think I would attempt that on the front ones, but this one, since they didn't work, I figured why not. Also with the clips here, I degreased them. To undo them, you'll have one clip there and one clip there. I just used two little flat heads and then I just used um, pliers and grabbed this lip right here and pulled it straight out and they came out. And they're hooked in, one's hooked in right there the black one, the black wire is hooked in there. And the other one is hooked in, I think here. No, sorry, here, right here. It looks like you can pop them out of here, but you can't. So what they are is kind of like the O2 housing clips. It's just a piece of, it's just a, a little slit and you can slide the slit on there like that to put it back. So just pull it off. And then you can screw these on. These ones seem to have much, much less play than the uh, front one so I, I hope I didn't damage them but we'll see I mean whatever but uh, I, uh, I should have taken them out in the beginning so I'm gonna make note of that and now's a good time to clean it off I just checked the contacts and whatnot so I'm gonna take those off put them on the down pipes before I install the down pipes this time okay so I'm using a giant 22 millimeter box wrench rubber mallet yeah I definitely should have done this differently Try to get a jack stand to support this so you don't have to take it out with one hand. I'm gonna clean these things off. Some carb cleaner. So for the V-band clamps, what I did was I stuck a screwdriver up in between the two. I already said that, and then kind of just tapped both sides until it's clear. I, ended up, I did end up taking the bolt or the, yeah, the bolts all the way out of them because it's the only way I can get it to move. That's what it looks like. They're both off. Now is the ideal time. Wastegate for rattle. Can't hold it back. Do it at the same time. Let's see. Okay. At least you can see one side. So, yeah, that. Now's a good time to tighten your wastegate, too, if you want. Wow, these turbos are insanely tiny. I've never seen a turbo that small. Okay, let me see if I can get a picture of this. This is funny. In the camera way up in there, I can't see what on the screen, but that turbine is insanely small. It's funny. It's hilarious, actually. It's pretty impressive, the power of these things. So, you can 
I can't even grab this thing, it's so damn small. So yeah, there's a little tiny shaft play on mine. Uh, the back one's still pretty tight. Yeah, the, the turbine on the rear turbo is better than the one on the front. But I think that's a normal thing on these cars. I'm going to do a vacuum test while this is closed. So what I'm going to do is put a vacuum line on the wastegate and see if it closes all the way. And then I can adjust it from there. This would be the ideal time to do that. So I'll put a camera here maybe and see if I can show you. Now would also be the ideal time to change out your vacuum lines. These are super cheap. This blue silicone stuff, which I, uh, I think it was 3.5 millimeters. It's a weird size. It's hard to find. This stuff is much better than the factory ones I had. So it was like $10 for 10 feet, I think. And that's how much I needed for the entire car, which I think I did a video. Anyways, I disconnected the rear wastegate and plugged in to the vacuum gauge here. Pump it up. So it stops at about 22.5. Alright, there you go. Now you can see the waste flapper is closed. There's going to be no light. Oh, my vision. So now you can test it for leaking before you tighten it. See, so now it's... This is nice and tight. Yeah, I had no wastegate shutter on this one. So the front line comes off this first boost solenoid right here and the T is right there down to the sensor and then remember don't get the don't get the one that's coming off to the to the canisters get the one that's going down to the turbo you probably know there's a leak too if you pump this up and it starts falling down You can leave it on there for a while and see if it holds. So that's pretty close. Yeah, see that one's nice and tight too. Wow. Pretty surprised. Although this one I did do the the washer mod. I did it on this one because <laughs> uh, I was chasing a problem and I never really solved it. So I guess it was in my head, but yeah. So my turbos are actually pretty decent and there this car's what a hundred and ten thousand now? It's pretty close to hundred and ten thousand. I put a lot of miles on it this year. You can see it from here. Right here, at the rear wastegate. All right, so that's right here. Here are the two mid pipes, right there. And the wastegate's right here. That's the easier one to, wait, actually with the vacuum line, I can't remember. I think that that is the harder one, I think. The easier one is on the front because you can reach it from the top. Okay, anyhow. Yeah, so if you have any other maintenance you want to do here to your turbos or check them out or whatever, now's the time to check things out. So now I'm going to go for the inlets. And then, uh, there's the pipe right here. Oh, I see it. Okay. So the bracket's right there, right next to the uh, vacuum line. Although you don't really need that bracket because thing is so damn close to the car. Yeah, I, I don't know how I'm going to get this out without cutting it. That's insane. In fact, how... <laughs> I don't even... I'd be curious how this thing gets even wider with new ones. This is going to be a mission. Alright, last view of the turbo. Oh, those, those rings around there, I bought those for $25. On this one, I could see it. I'm going to have to dig it out with the screwdriver. It doesn't look too squashed, but... Just to be safe, I'm going to replace those seals right around where the V-band clamps it. Here is just comparison. These are the VRSF ones. They say VRSF now, which, yeah, seems cool, but sucks for smog. So hopefully that doesn't show. Uh, although I'm probably going to have to swap these back, unfortunately. But that's what you're looking at. These are definitely, so 
there's the side view. These these are kind of squashed in places like a pancake. These are nice and round. So I have the downpipes primed. <laughs> So the front downpipe is longer, the rear downpipe is shorter. The front downpipe has the black, so has the black uh, downstream O2, and the rear has the gray downstream O2. Black front, gray back, and then I'll verify with the lengths. And the plugs over there, I believe they fit like Legos, so you can only fit one in into the other, they, and there's only one orientation, so you might have to turn it all four times and uh, one side is like a, a slide the other side is like a lego so kind of like tetris i have the rear gaskets that came with the set and new screws and then i have these these were 25 dollars from vsrf too these are new for the new gaskets for the top i'm gonna pry out the old ones with the screwdriver so for this i just stuck a screwdriver in the inside loop like this and just pry it upwards like that and it kind of came out it's coming out in flakes but damn i didn't think i was going to get it there's the old band there's the new band this is bent here that one's flatter so by feeling it it's really hard to tell there's maybe I mean, there's not much it's really hard to it's so minimal I would I would say that you wouldn't need to replace these. I just did it because I didn't know what I was going to be up against, and I didn't want to be halfway into this and have to wait a week and a half for two stupid gaskets. So, yeah, twenty five dollars is a bit steep because these are pieces of squashed metal. Probably cost three cents to make, but yeah, uh, I, I'd say you probably get by fine without uh, buying new ones. But just have them; they're going in. The new gaskets are in, and they're going to stick out a bit. I just tried to make sure I could tuck in the really large edges. One edge on each one was sticking out very far. I kind of just tapped it in. Not flattened it, but tapped it in a bit. Here are the nuts and bolts. Just wanted to note the VRSF. Pretty crappy on not providing nuts. So they want you to do these same wrestle nuts. I'm probably going to replace them. I didn't know offhand. And they come with two sets of washers. The flat washer will go on the bolt and the locking washer will go on the nut. So you have four of those for the pipes and then the two gaskets go there. And then I'm going to attempt to do this V-band and line it up right now. Then I'll show you. The rear downpipe is in. What I did is I put the V-band on the downpipe because it just wasn't possible the other way, and I slid it back. I had a lot of trouble. I just loosely connected these to hold it up because these VRSF ones don't have, they don't have hanger bolts. It was a pain. So now I'm gonna put the O2 sensor in here before I do the next one and tighten this bottom part. I used an inch per pound, so it's 120 inches, which is 10 feet per pound. So for the torque spec for that, and it hit it right about when those two parts touched. Now on the second one, I'm going to put the V-band on, line it up, loose, put the bolts loosely in the mid-pipe, and then go from there. What I did is I put the O2 sensor in, and the torque value is 37 foot-pounds. You have to basically twist the adapter up there with your hand until you get it in position just right. First, I, I tightened it with just a regular 3 8 ratchet, because uh, that fit inside here unless you have a shorty torque wrench, I don't, I don't think. But I was able to tighten it right here. It just, just between these two, I tightened so much with the other one that this locked out. I'm, I'm facing looking the back of the car. It's easier this way for the rear. The V-band orientation is not blocking the wastegate at all. So the wastegate can, because technically you could put it down. Uh, let's see, if that was like t 12 o'clock, that'd be like seven o'clock. You could technically put it there and it would, that would make it hit the wastegate with the bolt so also the v-band it was really hard to put on the easiest thing to do was just play with it until just the tip of the bolt will reach the nut and that's when it will start to thread when you squeeze it i didn't get them any closer than that but it worked so i just wanted to note real quick i'm not too happy that the bolt on the front 
downpipe, I don't know if this is for everybody, but the front downpipe, I can't put the bolt in this direction to torque it from the back, so I had to barely wiggle it and the bolt kind of hits the metal here. It seems safe on the other side, but yeah, that's just an oversight. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. It's dented in a little bit. I guess I could hammer it in, but anyways, it's just, uh, I don't know if that's a normal thing, but it just, uh, the bolt fit everywhere else, the other direction except here, so I just notate that. For the front pipe, I had to put the bolts in to help orient the V-band. So also, one thing, don't forget to put your gaskets in. It will be a huge pain if you put the bolts on and forget to put the gasket in. So make sure you put the gaskets in. Tightening these. This one back here, behind this, this is the passenger side. The one over here. I had to use a flathead and stick a flathead in there to hold the top of the bolt while using a torque wrench to tighten it. These are only supposed to be torqued to 16 foot pounds. I'm gonna just do the best I can to tighten it with probably a 3 eighths if I can't get access to a torque wrench on everything. But 16 foot pounds, just wanted to make a note that on the steering rack, I went out and bought a 16 this morning. So to get to it, I turned it, I turned the wrench this way, so it kind of tilts this way, and put it right up here, and I was able to hold on the top right there, just like that. I'm holding on the bolt while tightening down here to 41 foot-pounds. And this one looks different because this one was stripped out for some reason, so I just had to replace the whole bolt and nut for now until I can order another one. You can access it by doing the wrench thing on this side. I'm facing, that's the back of the car that way. So you can do that right here and right here just by sticking your fingers up. Just be really careful with this metal line here. Don't tighten this one until you got that bolt in, at least. Here's the shot of the... I wish it didn't say VRSF because it's a dead giveaway, but I guess it's kind of with the weld like that. It's kind of the same thing. All right, the job's done. It gets actually a lot easier once you do it and then realize how to do it and then taking it off, putting it on every two years, if that's the case, like me, should be a lot simpler the next time around. Hopefully you don't break anything or permanently strip anything, but other than that, it should be pretty simplistic. Thank you so much for watching. I would really appreciate the support if you could just subscribe to my channel, throw me a like if it helped you out, and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. So thanks for watching, and I hope you guys all have really good luck with your projects and Faster cars. <laughs> Take care.